Well, welcome everyone. We are so excited to have you here today. Um, I love seeing your faces on the screen. So please feel free to keep your screen on if you'd like to. We would just ask that you mute your microphone for right now, but be aware we're gonna have lots and lots of opportunities for you to share and talk today. Um, this is being recorded. So the ones that um, weren't here live, will get to see this a little bit later on. So again, we're really excited to have you here today for Crossing America. So with that being said, Kimberly Kastner is our, our host today. So she will be um, letting people in and moder moder excuse me, moderating the chat. Um, so we're gonna try the chat right now. Would you please type in your chat window where you're coming from today so we can see how we're represented. Teachers, you can do that for us if you'd like to. Where are you coming from? What state are you in? All right, Massachusetts is in the house. We have a couple from North Carolina, one outside of Charlotte and one from Greensboro. Coolidge, Arizona. I'm glad you're here, Ranger Sarah. That's gonna be fun for our kids today. Where else are we from? Miss, um, let's see, Miss Drysdale's class. Where are you guys from? Can you tap that, uh, type that into the chat window? And maybe Miss Mosier's class. Okay, we see Miss Eisner's class is from West Virginia. All right, great. Well, thanks so much for joining us again. Um, and well, let's get started. So this is episode nine of our National Parks Adventure Crossing America in partnership with the National Park Foundation. So each month we offer a few of these virtual events where we take you around the country and learn a little bit more about the national park sites that we are visiting. So again, welcome on behalf of Expeditions and Education and the National Park Foundation. So this is actually the sign um, when you go to Casa Grande National Monument, and this is in Coolidge, Arizona. And this is a, a picture of the great house, the Casa Grande house. So today we're gonna be talking about the geography, the science, the stories, and the STEM behind this amazing place. I'm gonna ask Steve to put it back on me for just a moment because as you know, we are scrapbooking all of our events. So if you were gonna set up your note-taking journals or your scrapbook now, you might wanna set it up in a way that will give you a few topics. So first of all, we're gonna find out where we're located. We're gonna find out what it's all about. We're gonna talk about the who. We're gonna talk about your impact and how you can help. And then we're also gonna talk about stories. So as you hear things being um, spoken about today or you see things, make sure you're taking a few notes so that you can create your scrapbook. All right, so back to our episode. Today we're in Coolidge, Arizona, which is in Pinal County. So if you're working on your map, um, the white part of the map is where you're going to be uh, focusing most of your attention today. And then once you see the state of Arizona, you're gonna look over at the county map and you're gonna pick out Pinal or Pennell. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. So I know for students in North Carolina, that's probably very interesting to you because we have a hundred counties. So we have a lot smaller places, um, but these are the counties for Arizona. So before I introduce you to Ranger Sarah, which you're gonna love, let's take a silent virtual tour of Casa Grande. So as you're looking at this, I want you to think about things that may look the same in the areas that you live. 
maybe a place you've visited before that has some of the same types of structures. And then I want you to think about things that you've never seen before. Think about the building materials. Think about things that you think are very old and things that are very new. I want you to make some guesses on um, how old you think these structures are. I want you to think about what those openings are for. So this beautiful structure is the Casa Grande Ruins National Monument. And we're so fortunate today to have Ranger Sarah with us. So Ranger Sarah, you're actually standing right there in the middle of Casa Grande. So we're excited to bring you on. And there we go. There, that's not an artificial background. We can tell that <laughs> because we see the shadows on your face. So why don't you introduce yourself? The kids have already seen your video, so they know a little bit about you, but now they're seeing you right in person. So thanks for joining us. Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's morning here. So good morning. If it's morning where you're joining us or good afternoon, I'm so excited to have you all here so you can experience and learn about Casa Grande Ruins National Monument. And like Dr. Drizzle said, I am right here on site. You might even see people walking behind me at some point um, because we're open to the public. We have visitors that come here from all over the United States and locally. Now, Casa Grande Ruins National Monument is named after this building here, which you all just saw a video of. And this is the Casa Grande. And if you know Spanish, Casa Grande means big house or great house in Spanish. And this is what we are most famous for, this big four-story structure that was built about 700 years ago. So it's a pretty old building. Now, Casa Grande Ruins National Monument is part of the National Park Service. Raise your hand if you've been to a national park before. Have any of you been to a national park? Oh, I see a lot of hands going up. So in the United States, all across the United States, there are over 400 National Park Service sites. And in Arizona, where I am right now, there are 22 national parks. So we have a lot of different places that you can go to hike and to learn. Our most famous national park is Grand Canyon National Park, which is up here in Northern Arizona. Raise your hand if you have heard of Grand Canyon National Park before. Ooh, I see a lot of hands going up. So they get a lot of attention, but Casa Grande Ruins National Monument is also a really special place. And we're down here in the Southern part of Arizona. So we are a small site, but we have a lot of really big history. And all of the work that we do in national parks, all the work that I do as a park ranger has to do with our mission. So if you look at this picture right here, this is what we call the National Park Service symbol. And this represents our mission. And a mission is something that you want to accomplish. So maybe you had a mission today that you wanted to learn or have fun. Well, when I get up each day and I put my hat on, this flat hat and my badge, I think about our mission. And if you look at this picture, Every part of this picture represents what we're protecting. We're protecting animals. So we have in other national parks, we have bison or buffalo. We don't have them here, uh, but this animal down here represents that this is a safe place for all wildlife. We also have this tall tree. This is a sequoia tree, which grow in California, but this represents all of our plants. So in a national park, all the plants are protected. You can see behind me, there are some different cactus. Right, we have saguaro cactus, and this probably looks a lot different than where you live. All of the cactus, all of the plants are protected here. This is a safe place for them. We also have scenery in national parks, like mountain ranges or canyons, like the Grand Canyon, or the Great House, like you see behind me here. All of that scenery is protected. And then we have this shape here. Now this shape is an arrowhead. And arrowheads are tools or artifacts that would have been used to hunt with. This represents all of our human history. 
And Casa Grande Ruins National Monument has a lot of human history. We're protecting people that lived here 900 years ago in the past. We're also protecting the history of people today. So it's not just all in the past, but we have people that also are connected to this place today. So oftentimes when you hear about Casa Grande Ruins National Monument and the people that were living here, you often hear the word Hohokam. Now the word Hohokam is an archeological term. Archeologists are scientists that study human history. They study people from the past. And sometimes they study the stuff that people left behind, like the great house behind me or pottery or arrowheads. But when we talk about the people that were living here, 800 years ago, we don't call them Hohokam because we don't know what they would have called themselves. We call those people the ancestral Sonoran desert people. So go ahead and say that out loud. Ancestral Sonoran desert people. And we call them that because they lived here in the past. They lived in the Sonoran desert and they were people. So we can call them the ancestors or just the people. And like I said, even though most of our history that we're talking about here is about people that lived here hundreds of years ago, we still have connections today. In fact, we have six traditionally associated Native American tribes. This is their history. And they still live here in this area. This is a place that they can come and walk in the footsteps of their ancestors. And those six tribes are the Akamo Odtham or the Gila River Indian community, the Tohono Odtham, the Salt River Pima Maricopa community, the Akchin community, and the Hopi and the Zuni. So it's important to remember how important these places are to the people. This is their history, right? Now, if we think about the people that were living here in the past, they were really accomplished people. They were farmers. They farmed the desert, they changed the desert landscape, and they farmed things like corn, and beans and squash. Raise your hand if you like to eat corn, beans, and squash. Oh, I see some hands going up right away. They also were cotton farmers. So they were transforming the desert landscape and they had to figure out how to move water so that their farm fields could thrive. So not only were they farmers, they were also engineers. And they engineered massive canal systems to move water from the rivers in the area down to their farm fields, just like you see right here. And that was one of their biggest accomplishments. They also built a thriving community right here in the desert. So you can imagine that if you were to transport yourself back in time 800 years ago, there would be lots of activity. People would be making pottery, grinding corn, making jewelry, playing games, just like we have lots of activity in our lives today. So these people lived here in the past, but they were people just like you and me. So that's a little overview of our site. And I'm so happy that you all get to learn about this place today. And Dr. Drizzle, that's all I've got right now. If you have any other questions for me, let me know. Um, but I'll let you take it away. That sounds great. Thank you, Ranger Sarah. And we're actually going to have some Q&A time at the end, but I want to take us back to our scrapbook for just a moment and give kids just a moment to look. So we said, where is Casa Grande Ruins National Monument? And we found out that it's in Coolidge, Arizona, in the Pinal County. We also found out what it is. So it's a national monument. I know that when you first began this journey with us, you thought there might've been just like 60 or 61 or 63 national parks, but actually there's 424 plus national park sites all around the country. So we wanna make sure that we're honoring all of them. And this one's a national monument. And then she talked about the who. Now, I love that she talks about their people, their humans, and we're part of that human race. But what we're calling them are ancestral Sonoran Desert people. So let's think about that as we begin to write and learn from them. So let's go back. And now we're going to start our stories. And as you've been joining us for a while, you know that we think stories are the most important thing that we can write down and speak about. So we wanna make sure that we're telling stories today. Ranger Sarah 
<clears throat> shall, <clears throat> excuse me, shared the story of the ancestral Sonoran desert people. But let me tell you about a few other people that came afterwards. We found out that there was no written language um, left behind. So how would we find out about Casa Grande? Well, one person that shared uh, the story of Casa Grande um, visited there in 1694, and this is Padre Kino. So he went there and he came up with these words, Casa Grande, our great house, and that's still used today. So he went and told the story. Someone else that told the story is Lieutenant Colonel Juan Bautista de Anza. And he actually visited these ruins in 1775 and again, told the story. And then we have Brigadier General Stephen Watts Kearney. And he was there in 1846. So from the 1600s through the middle of 1800s, People visited these ruins and they started to tell the story about the great house. Well, as you can imagine, as this story is getting out of these beautiful ruins, people start visiting these places and they do a little bit of damage there. They take souvenirs and artifacts and things start to crumble a little bit. So then we have two more people. So Mary Hemingway and Mark Cushing came through and Saul, that, excuse me, Frank Cushing, came through and uh, were on an archaeological expedition. And they, they found this deterioration of the Casa Grande, and they started writing down and telling more stories. So they knew about this place, and now they're seeing that people aren't taking care of it. So in 1892, President Benjamin Harris decided that he was going to set some of this apart. Um, as protected area. So when we were visiting in Arizona with Ranger Sarah, she told us about the Casa Grande ruins being the first prehistoric and cultural reserve established in the entire United States, which that's exciting news too. And then we come to Frank Pinkley. Now you heard about him in our video, how he lived on the land and he helped protect the Casa Grande ruins, in fact, or excuse me, reserve. Actually, he set up these other places where he was able to go and protect them too. So in this story about Casa Grande, who would you have been? Would you have been the original peoples that lived there? Would you have been the person that visited and started to tell the story? Could you have been that person that recognized that things weren't going really great there and they wanted to protect the place so you brought attention to it? Or were you someone like President Harrison or Frank Pinkley who actually did something about it? All of those people are important people in the story. And the story doesn't end because there is no period there. There's a comma. And we want you to be able to continue telling the story of the Casa Grande ruins and the ancestral um, Sonoran desert people. So kids, as always, what is your story? We found out that there's some farming that was done there. Um, have you ever visited or lived on or near a farm? Have you ever visited a desert? And I forgot to type one more in there. Do you know an engineer? Because there were engineers back in the day. They were taking over the jobs of engineers to create those canals. So when you watch the virtual experience, you realize that water was an important part of the story for drinking, for farming, but they didn't have these um, recent inventions where irrigation could just pop out of the ground and turn around and sprinkle things. They had to get water from one place to the other. I was trying to find a way to share how this irrigation works, not recently, but sort of mimicking what happened back in the day. And I found this great video from a farmer um, in India that is still using these ancient ways of moving water from one place to the other. So what I want you to do is, we're gonna do our what do you see, what do you know, and what do you wonder? 
So at this next short video, I want you to have your pencil ready and I want you to keep your eyes on the screen and I want you to just to come up with things that really stick out to you that make you go, wow, or aha. So here is the video. Now that video fascinates me because this wasn't happening a hundred years ago in that video. This is what is happening now. And this young man is being very innovative to get water to the crops. So here we're coming with a brand new part of our Crossing America, a actual design challenge right in the middle of our episode where we're not giving you any information, but we just told you to bring stuff. So here we go. So teachers, if you got the email about bringing some cups and then a cup of water, I want you to get those passed out to your students. If you didn't, that is absolutely okay. What I'm going to encourage you to do is watch what we're getting ready to do now and then try to um, make it happen at a later time. So students, if you don't have your cups and water for each little team, why don't you take your pencil and be ready to come up with ideas for this. So this is called a water carrying challenge. So in groups of three or four or whatever you have your group set up with, I want each person to have a cup. It can be any type of cup that you have. I just happen to have some solo cups here. So you're gonna give each person one of these cups. Now, one person in your group is gonna be the designated water holder. So in this cup, I have about a half a cup of water. Teachers, you can put whatever you want to in there. I did a half a cup just in case I spilled it. There wouldn't be a lot going on here, especially around my computer. But so I have cup here. So here is your challenge. <clears throat> Let me read the rules. You are gonna get your water from one side of the room to the other side of the room, or about a distance of six or seven feet if you don't wanna to go too far. There's gonna be water, full water on one side. Everyone has a cup. And then we want you to put one person on the other side ready to receive. I want you to get this water to the other side. Here are the constraints. Every person must have a cup. Every cup must contain a little bit of water. Only one cup can go to the other side of the room at a time. So you're gonna get all of the water from one side or your water reservoir, your pond, your river, your lake, and you're gonna get it to the side where you can use it for drinking water or for farming or for irrigation. Now remember, only one person can be moving at a time. Everybody that moves has to have some of the water. The water has to be delivered to the, res to the other reservoir, so the person holding this. And this is not a race, okay? It's not a race. It's who can get this water from here to here with everybody playing a part without spilling it or falling over on top of each other. So I'm excited to now look at my screen and see how this is starting. 
and see who is going to try the challenge first. I know that Mr. Krause's class has their cups ready. If there's any other um, classes, if you'll just let me know and we're going to start looking, you can, um, we'll just try this for a few minutes. So let's see, Mr. Krause, are you ready? Yeah, it looks like they're getting ready. So I'm going to actually pin his group up for just a moment. Actually, Steve, will you do that? Can you pin Mr. Krause's group for just a moment? And we're going to see if they can get their water. And also, Ms. Eisner's class looks like they're, they've got their cups. Okay, they're moving too. So actually, let's don't pin yet. Let's just look. Ms. Kastner's class, I'm going to expect for you to take some notes. Think about what they do that looks good and then what you're going to learn from it when you actually recreate this at another time. So let's see. If there's any other classes that are trying. Remember, if you're not going to get to participate in this one, you take notes to see how you would move it. So Mr. Krause's class. Give me a thumbs up when you guys are ready to start delivering your water. Yep, here they go. Actually, Ms. Kastner's class is moving to do that too. So we haven't tried this before, so it's going to be kind of strange. I know Ranger Sarah is really excited to see how this works. So let's go ahead and start the, um, the challenge and see if you're moving the water. And I'm actually fine if your microphones come on so we can hear some of the conversations too. So that would be an okay thing. All right, we got one class going. We will switch back and forth with the classes. So we'll start with Mr. Um, Krause's class and then we'll move um, to Ms. Eisner's class. Oh, so uh, I didn't see that there. Okay. Ms. Collins class, make sure that you watch the, um, the archive that will be up sometime later this afternoon. So you can go to the website and just click on and finish. Thanks for joining us, Ms. Collins class. All right, so let's see what's happening here. Mr. Krause, I know you're at the other side of the room, but if you want to unmute your microphone, we wouldn't mind hearing the conversations. All right, well, we're unmuted. <laughs> All right, so we're pouring, we're trying to make sure we have directions right, Dr. Drizzle. So we've got our receiving end over here, and we've got our starting end over here. And yep. now we're working. So everyone has to have a cup at each time. They all, they all have to be holding a cup. Water has to go from one side to the other by passing through each person on the team and no spillage. So should they line up? Whatever you think the best way for them. So if, if they want to talk about what would be the, the least right. uh, restricted way out. to get there. They're going to come to your cup. Sure. The receivers are the ones who are going to get it. Do you have water in your cup? Then y'all have to go back. Do you have water in your cup? Oh, okay. So let's, let's redo that one. Okay, we're taking water from here. You're gonna receive it Yeah. So we have another class that's trying to, so keep going, Mr. Kraus, and let's pin Ms. Eisner's class for just a moment. So let's see what you guys are doing. All right, Miss Eisner's class. It looks like you're there. You go. So okay, got it. Got it. All right, we're ready. Dr. All, All right. right. We've got our starters that are ready. I'm gonna count down. Ready? No spills. Three, two, one, go. Irrigate. A lot of water. Done. Wait, what? <laughs> We're done too. We're done. All right, we did it. So this time I'm going to ask you to do it one more time, but I want you to get further apart and not in a straight line. Okay. So think about how you're going to do that. 
Now, without being in a straight line in the same group. Yes. Your, so try that. And try to do it. All right, let's go to Miss uh, Caster's class. I see you doing it there. Give me a thumbs up. Yeah, you guys are moving. So yeah. let's go yeah. back to um, Mr. Krause's class for just a moment and see how they're coming along. And we'll come back to you, Miss Eisner. All right, Mr. Krause's class, how's it working out? Yeah. I think some of us have found our truth, Dr. Grizzle. There's a lot of good conversation happening now. We did it. Great. All right, let's finish up this particular activity in one minute, and then we'll head back to our seat and debrief. All right, if you already did it once, go back and do it one more time. You still working on it? You got one minute. All right, did any other classes come up with an idea? Did they get it across? Can you just show me with thumbs up if it if it worked the second time? Yeah, Ms. Caster's class, thank you. So we're going to start heading back to our seat in about 30 seconds. All right. So I want us to think just a minute about what skills it took to get that water from one spot to the other. Now, I know you're thinking that wasn't very hard, right? We didn't have to go far. And the and the walkway that we used was, there were no rocks in it. <clears throat> and it wasn't, um, we had, it, we, everyone had a cup, right? But what skills did you use? Is there anybody in a class that wants to unmute and maybe share one of the skills that you used to have this water uh, carrying challenge be successful? Teachers, if you have someone that you wanna share, you can raise and unmute. What skill did you use? Mariah, come here. Come here. Come on, quick. Okay. So, like, can you explain what you mean by that real quick? Yeah. So, what skills did you use? Like, what were you thinking when this happened? What did everybody have to do to make this work? Okay. So, what we all had to do is we had to, like, kind of like communicate so that we could get so that we could understand that we all had to have at least a little bit of water in everybody's cup perfect so communication skills were really important thank you for sharing that miss castor's class it looks like you may have somebody ready to share yeah this is my friend friendly she wants to tell you what she thought okay uh, so i poured a little bit into the person ahead of me because if just in case the person before me didn't pour as much, I still had more water to pour in to the other persons. Perfect. So you were using critical thinking skills at that time. You were thinking, okay, I've got to make sure that the water is exactly the same way. Yeah, great job. Miss Eisner's class, do you have someone that might want to share a skill that they uh, found that they used? Yes, we do. Okay, so go ahead. So we did so for our row i poured a lot into um bella's cup and so we could just pass it down okay so you were thinking about and what was what would you call that when you worked well with with another student uh helping helping out so how about teamwork did it take some teamwork to do yeah. this yeah excellent so sarah i know you're excited about this because they are representing today these skills that um the people the ancient the excuse me the ancestral sonoran desert people use so ranger sarah come on screen for just a moment and what do you think about this what do you think um this experience how did it resonate with you ranger sarah Oh, it made it come alive because we talk a lot about how people in the past were moving water 
But to see all of you actually have to think about it and figure it out, it made me like, oh, wow, this is how the people that lived here in the past, this is how what they had to do. They had to work as a team. They had to use critical thinking skills. They had to help each other. Um, so that was really, really cool to see all of you figure it out. And yeah, it just made it come alive for me. Great. Well, thank you. So let's go back and finish up um, with our deck. So what we did today is we talked about clean water, getting the water to a certain place for, for use. And then we also talked about sustainable cities. So even though we wouldn't call um, back in the day a city, it was definitely a community and people had to work together to stay alive. They had to make sure that they had food and they had water. And we know that water is the source of our life. So two things I want you to think about. First of all, the STEM challenge that we gave you for Casa Grande Ruins is all about thinking about how these ancestral Sonoran desert people discovered this idea of canals and how they had to dig the canals. And then we want you to try to design your own community based on what you learned. And you wanna make sure that you include plans for irrigation. Now you're probably saying, but wait a minute, there's water everywhere here. There is water. Let's think about how you would have gotten the water from a certain body of water. So don't think about, well, there's already pipes here, or I can just turn on my spigot. Think about the young man we saw earlier. He was getting the water from the source. How can you design a community and figure out how you will get water into the community. So we want you to create a drawing, design a model of your community and create a prototype of your irrigation design and use all of the things that you learned today. Talk about the geography, the science of where you're living, any stories that you may need to tell and then you're doing the STEM. So let's come back to me for just a moment. I have an idea. You're, Teachers may not be real excited about it, but I would love to see you do this again sometime and maybe send me some video or photos of you moving water, but on a larger scale. Maybe the whole class moves water together, or maybe you combine with another group and you try to use move the water. And here's the, the catch. Maybe you move it in little Dixie cups. So you have to move maybe two full cups but everyone only has a Dixie cup at a time or wonder if there were no cups could you move it with your hands think about innovative ways that you could demonstrate how water can be moved through a canal that you build a canal with your hands maybe you have to put your hands together for your irrigation canal I think that would be fun and it would also represent those four skills that we need so much communication collaboration, critical thinking, and then also being creative. Ranger Sarah, we have a few minutes left, so I'm going to bring you back on the screen. Do we have any students that have a question for Ranger Sarah? Maybe how she got to the park? We know a little bit about that through the virtual field trip, but do you have another question for Sarah? And if you do, just raise your hand on the Zoom and we will um, ask you to unmute and share a question. Yeah, so Ms. Castor's class has one, so we're going to get Steve to pin that class and then um, ask your question to Ranger Sarah. Um, do you grow any other cacti other than saguaro cactuses? That's a good question. So here in the Sonoran Desert, there are a lot of different cactus that grow naturally. So the, the most popular one that we see, the famous one is a saguaro cactus, like you can see behind me, the tall one right here. But then there's a cactus right here, just above my hand, that's actually called a Sunita cactus. We have prickly pear cactus. Gosh, what else? We have um, beaver tail cactus. We have lots of different species, and I actually don't know the, the, the exact number, but there's quite a few. Thank you. Great question, great question. And the prickly pear cactus actually tastes beautiful when um, used for, for jellies or jams, and we actually got to taste some of that while we were there. Does someone else have a question for Ranger Sarah? If you do, just go ahead and unmute. Your microphone. We have a few minutes left. We can do another question. Here comes Mr. Krause's class.
There we go. Go ahead. My, my name is Amarian, but how many animals do you see out there? Oh, that's a great question. So the different types of animals that live here in the desert, we have coyotes, we have desert cottontail rabbits, jackrabbits, we have lizards. I see lizards quite a bit. That's probably one of the most common animals to see. We have different bird species like turkey vultures or great horned owls or gambles quail. And we have rattlesnakes as well. So we have lots of different snakes that, um, and it's starting to warm up here. So we're starting to get into the season where we'll start seeing those snakes again. Um, so at any given day, we could see any number of those types of wildlife that live here in the desert. Kathy, she, he has another one right after that. Okay, I'm Mariah, and um, how do, like, okay, so if someone was to, like, like, do you have art, like, a lot of art pieces and stuff there? Art pieces? Yes. Yeah, so we have a lot of different what we call artifacts. So when this place was first protected in the 1800s, we had archaeologists, the scientists that studied the past and human history, they, they dug in the ground and they excavated things like pottery. So the people that were living here made beautiful pottery. This is an example of a replica pot. Um, they made baskets, they made jewelry. Um, so that's an example of the art that the people in the past were creating. Um, today, we do have some of our, um, our tribal partners, people that have connection here will come and they will demonstrate some of their artwork, like painting, basket making, and pottery and jewelry making as well. Perfect. Then, Mr. Krause, yeah. if you will hold on to that last question and let's switch over to Ms. Castro's real quick and then we'll come back to you. And Ms. Eisner, if you have a question, just bring someone on up to the microphone. We have three minutes. How old were you when you started as a park ranger? Oh, that's a really good question. I was 26 when I started as a park ranger. Yep. Very good. Ms. Oh, Asner's you. class? Okay. You wanna, yeah. So my question actually was, how big is the actual park? Yeah, that's a great question. Our park is exactly one square mile. So I believe it's 750 some acres, um, but it, it equals out to be one square mile. So we're a big square parcel of land. So it's pretty small compared to other parks that have thousands of miles of acreage in their, in their site. Great, thank you. And our last question from Mr. Krause's class. Yeah, we're gonna... My name is Ashton, and what is your most common plant that you see when you're in the park? The most common plant. The most common plant that we see, I would say, is the creosote bush. And if you look behind me, you might see um, next to the cactus over here, actually, if I can figure out right there, this bush right here, if you can see right above my hand, that's a creosote bush. And it is one of the most prevalent bushes that grow here. It has a waxy coating on its leaves. So when it rains, the water releases an odor. So it, the desert smells like rain. So if you ever come out here after rain, you'll smell the creosote bush. Great, such a great question. So I wanna remind you um, that we would like to see your scrapbook photos. We wanna know what your next big best thing is, um, your, your community planning, your water carrying. We also want you to share with the Casa Grande Ranger. So teachers, if you can grab that um, Flipgrid uh, link and maybe if Ms. Castor's class can try to get that in for me, but it's flipgrid.com slash E2A7C62D. That is a long thing. Maybe you can just take a picture of it, teachers, and then you can have your kids share this with us. One more time, it's E2A7C62D. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you've not registered for our next event, make sure you do that at bit.ly backslash crossing America. And you can also do that on our website. We wanna thank the National Park Foundation for being part of our journey. We do want to announce, though, that yesterday we hit our 100,000 100, student 
um, that has participated in our Cross in America event since November. So that's real exciting and we're celebrating that on our side. Check out the National Parks Casa Grande. Also check out our website, go to the nationalparks.org. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm so excited. This has been a great day, a small group, but mighty, mighty, mighty answers and cooperation. So thank you, Ranger Sarah. Thank you, everyone. And if you'll turn your uh, cameras on for just a minute, we're going to do a screenshot where everyone's smiling and, and doing all the things. We do want to say that Precious is on here, and Precious is a brand new Ranger at Casa Grande. So Precious, if you want to show your face, you can, but we're excited that you're here. And I also want to introduce my very dear friend, Karen Lee, who works with the National Park Foundation. And kids, she's the reason we're getting to do all of this. She met with us last year and she's allowing us to do this. So let's, everyone's smiling. And now will you please turn your camera, turn your audio off and tell everyone goodbye. Turn your audio on. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Oh, look at those Thank beautiful you. faces. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. All right. Until Thank next you. time, this is Dr. Drizzle, and we're out of here. All right.